So your masterpiece video is done, signed, sealed, delivered, and it's time to delete all that footage to make room for the next video. Or maybe you hold on to all your footage, you know, just in case. Well, what if I told you that you can still be a video footage minimalist without deleting all your footage so you can still recut it later down the road? And that's exactly what media management in DaVinci Resolve 17 is all about. So let's jump in and learn this great technique to not waste hard drive space after a project wraps up. All right, we're over here in DaVinci Resolve 17.2.2 today. Just for reference, I've got about a five and a half minute long video of making chocolate chip cookies shot with the Sony FX3 with the Sony XAVCS i codec, just for reference. And we want to media manage this so that we can archive it and it's a lot smaller. We do that by going up to File, Media Management, right there. And under here, we have three options. There's Entire Project, Timelines, and Clips. I'm going to show you Timelines because that's how I like to use it. And then under timelines, we have the option for copy and transcode. Um, transcode is going to let you make it a different sort of video essence, a different flavor of video. Maybe you want it to play back better. You could choose something like ProRes, or you could choose a lower quality H.264 if you needed smaller files to save out. I want to retain the original footage quality, which you probably do too. So we're going to choose copy. And under copy, we have some really cool options here. So the first thing you're going to do is choose your timeline. We're going to choose Grandma's Cook Chocolate Chip Cookies Final. Side note, if you put final in the title, it's probably not going to be your final. You're going to have a second final. So maybe don't do that. Anyways, um, we have down under copy, we have use media, and then we also have use media and trim. So this is kind of the crux to being able to have flexibility later on is this whole trim with the handles concept. And what I want to explain real quick is what a handle is. So we have our timeline. It has like an in and an out point, right? Well, a handle is anything that's before the beginning of that in point and after the end of that out point. So what this does is if you turn this number up from zero, you're going to be able to extend a shot uh, later on, um, but you're still going to be making the shot a lot shorter overall, so you're saving on a lot of hard drive space. So if I just say copy use media, it's going to do every single full clip that's used on the timeline. Um, and right now that's showing it's gonna be 28 gigs and our new size is 28 gigs. It doesn't really save us a lot of space. But if we say used media and trim, choose that button with zero handles, it goes from 28 gigs down to 10 gigs. So about a third of the file size, you're gonna save a lot of hard drive space. However, because it's at zero handles, you can't really adjust it later on. You could rearrange the clips um, and you'd have all your edit points there but you don't have anything extra. So I would say at a minimum, it's probably a good idea to turn this up to like 12 frames, which if you're shooting 24P, that's half a second. Um, that's gonna increase your file size a little bit. We're up to 12 gigs, but it still gives you quite a bit to, to work with. Um, if you need to like tweak something, maybe you're changing music, need to have something sync up to a new beat. Um, the other options you have down here are use project name subfolder, keep things organized, um, consolidate multiple edits, segments into one file. What this one does, is if you are going to need to recolor grade it later on, it's going to take, if you have that same shot in multiple spots, it's going to just make sure that it only makes one file of it so you can use remote grading later on. Um, there'll be another tutorial on this channel for sure about remote grading. It's super powerful. I don't do that because at this point I feel like, well, I've already graded the project, so I don't need that flexibility. It just makes bigger files. But do make sure you check preserve hierarchy after zero folder levels. This is really important, on, especially on consumer cameras, because a lot of them will use the same file name, so it's dependent on the folder structure to make sure that things relink properly. So keep that on there. It'll make relinking much, much easier for you. So all that's left to do now is choose a destination of where you want it to go, click Browse, and like any good tutorial, you put it right on your desktop, right? So we got a media managed folder on the desktop. We click Open and Start. And just like that, it's going to go through all 70 clips here and make new clips that are the exact same video essence, the XAVCSI codec, but only using what's on the timeline plus the uh, trim of the 12 handles that we told us. So it's 12 frames before the beginning of the cut and 12 frames after. All right, while the computer kicks out copies of the trimmed up media, I just want to take a second real quick to welcome you if you're new here. This is Creative Video Tips. I'm Chadwick, and I'm stoked that you found this channel. It's all about helping you create videos that make a difference and stand out. I've got lots of great tricks about using DaVinci Resolve, so if you're into that, subscribe right down below right now. That way you don't miss out on the next great tip. It's totally free. You can unsubscribe at any time, and it's also going to let me know that I'm doing something helpful by creating these tutorials. 
All right, let's jump back into Resolve so I can show you what we've created. All right, it looks like Media Management has finished. I'm gonna jump over here to the Finder. Inside the Media Manage folder, we are taking a look and we have 12.99, 13 gigs of footage, which is much smaller than the original 30 or so gigs. And we still have that 12 frames of handles that we created. Inside of here, you have a DRT file, which is DaVinci Resolve timeline file. This is actually all the information of that timeline. I'm gonna show you how to import that here in a second. And then inside of here is where all the footage is. And because we had told it to maintain that folder structure, that hierarchy, it should all be nested in all the folders that are necessary. So it even took our music. It wasn't just the video footage. So that's good to know, right? You're gonna have all the assets that you need. And then within the clips folder, you'll notice anytime you use multiple parts of the same clip, it creates a unique file name for you. So it's not overwriting them um, unnecessarily so. So these are different instances of that same 425 clip. There are five or six of them here. Um, it just does that automatically. And because of the time code and the relationship to the DRT file, it's gonna link up perfectly when we try to import those into a new project as we can do with our DRT file. So let's do that next. So. Um, to open this, like we're starting a totally fresh project, we're coming back at this years later. Let's go back to uh, DaVinci Resolve. We'll hit our project manager with Shift-1, and let's create a new project, okay? And we'll call this on archive. And then to import a timeline in here, it's Command-Shift-I, or you could go to File, Import, uh, Timeline, right there. And then we just point it to our desktop folder where we had that DRT file made, which is this grandless chocolate chip cookies. We click open. And yes, we do want it to change for us and set that all up for us. And just like that, it has linked and found all of those new clips that are the XAVCS I codec that um, it had made to match what the, our original source files were. So just like that, we go back over here to the media page. You can see these are indeed the media managed versions but there's still this H.264 high 422 codec. This is still really great looking footage. Um, we haven't lost any quality. The only thing we have lost, and I will point this out because it is important, we have lost any information if you wanted to know about the gamma or the uh, color space that you can normally find using Sony Catalyst Browse if it's S-Log3, for example. <laughs> um, we have lost that information, so if you want to retain that later on, you maybe put a text note on what type of footage you have in there. But other than that, that's as easy as, uh, that's all there really is to it. So um, if we go back to the timeline here, we can see that we ha indeed do have handles on the footage because we can take this and we can roll it out, you know, 12 frames either direction. Hey, if you learned something new, make sure to give this video a like so that other people can find it and learn too. And if you wanna learn more about video editing in DaVinci Resolve, maybe using the speed editor, click the playlist I have on screen right now. And since there's so much more to learn, I'll see you in that next video.